Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a still life. I'm going to be painting an apple. So we'll just get straight into the video and I hope you enjoy it. I'm painting on an 8 inch by 8 inch linen panel and I'm sketching out the composition here using Burnt Sienna mixed with Liquin Original. And Liquin's the medium that I'm going to be using throughout the painting. This is because I'm using oil paints, so it speeds up the drying time which is really convenient and it also thins out the paint. Now I'm painting this apple here direct from life and what I did was I set up a light box just made out of a cardboard box that I got from a supermarket. I cut out a hole in the side and just placed a ring light in the side of the hole so that the light is shining on the apple and this is so that we've got some depth to the apple that I'm going to be painting here. We've got the strong area in light and the highlights and then we've got some half tones and some shadows so that's going to really contribute to the three-dimensional form of the painting so it's going to be a lot of fun painting this. I enjoyed painting this one. So why paint a still life? Well actually it's a really good opportunity to study objects up close and especially if you're a beginner at painting as well, get your head around learning about values, that's how light or dark your subject is, and just colour mixing in general. The other cool thing about painting still lifes is they're very easy and cheap to set up. You can often find things around your home, especially things like fruit, which is what I'm painting in this case. And as I say, easy to set up and you can get painting really quickly. So now what I'm doing here is I'm starting off with the background of this painting. So I painted the cast shadow that's being cast from the apple itself where the light's shining on it. And then I just want this kind of loose background, loose brush mark. I'm kind of painting it in a stylized kind of way. So I really don't want any detail on it at all. It's more about the brushwork. I want the value of the background to be a little bit darker so that kind of emphasizes the apple. But one of the things I've done here is I've mixed a combination of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, alizarin crimson and titanium white. So that mixture is more on the red side. And the reason for this is because red is the complementary opposite to green on the color wheel. And as the apple is green, it's going to sit really nicely against the green of the apple. Now I'm painting this quite quickly. I'm using a number five flat brush here to block in the painting. And as I said, I'm using oil paints. I'm using a brand called Blue Ridge Oils and this is an artist quality oil paint. Now I'd always recommend using an artist quality oil paint even if you've never painted in your life. Just because the quality of the paints is so much better. They actually extend further as well than say using student oil paints and your painting experience will just be so much better. So really from the get go, I'd always recommend using an artist quality oil. And admittedly, some of the colors can be a bit expensive, but I found some of the more expensive colors tend to last quite a lot longer. And the colors that I go through like there's no tomorrow, like titanium white and ultramarine blue, tend to be a lot, lot cheaper. So something that I don't really worry about too much. Anyway, as I said, I'm using Blue Ridge oils. And if you want to get some, I've put a link in the description box below. Now, if you want the full list of colors that I'm using and the brushes, I've put a link to a blog post I've written where I've got a whole written painting tutorial that accompanies this video where I show you step by step how I painted that. So that's got all the details in there. But let's carry on talking about the paint I'm applying here to the apple. So I've just painted the shadow areas. First of all, for this, I used a mix of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium yellow so this green is a little bit darker it's darker in value I don't want it too saturated because it's in shadow and then for the half tones I've used these same colors but then I've added more cadmium yellow into the mix there's also some titanium white in there and even a little bit of cadmium red now as I said just a moment ago cadmium red is the complementary opposite to green so it helps to desaturate the green when that color is combined with it so we don't need too much cadmium red in there, just a little bit. It's just going to balance out the green. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just blending in a little bit the transition zones. I really want to emphasize as well the brush marks. So the transition zone between that shadow area and the half tones. I've also painted in some of those markings on the top of the apple. 
those kind of brown markings and this is a mix of yellow ochre with some burnt sienna a little ultramarine blue and some titanium white now for the areas of the apple that's in light i've essentially used the same colors that i've used for the half tones in this apple but i've added more cadmium yellow and titanium white into the mix there's also a little bit of cadmium red in there as well that's given it this kind of very subtle olive tone in there as well also one other thing you can do and you might notice it in the half tones of this apple is you can create a few subtle emerald tones in there by mixing in a little phthalo green and phthalo green's a great color for boosting the saturation of your green shifts the color to some of those more emerald tones but you've got to be careful not to use too much of it it's such a strong color and it's very easy to overpower your mixture with this so you'll only need it in small amounts but you can get some beautiful tasty greens with it especially if you're painting some like apples or you're painting grass for example great color to use now as i'm in the blocking in stage here i'm not worried about detail i'm more focusing on the sort of brush mark texture creating that kind of painterly artistic look and i sort of wanted to make this painting look like it was just effortlessly painted the background unfinished just to add interest to the overall composition so already at this point i was kind of getting near to finishing the block in stage and i was just adding in some of these brush marks at the top of the apple where these brown markings are and i'm basically kind of like forming a bit of a map sort of where the apple contours inwards where the apple core is and just marking out the transition zones between the areas in light and some of those shadow areas and i'm starting to use some smaller brushes as well so i've found that using a number three bristle filbert brush was really good and also a number three bristle flat brush to be honest it doesn't really matter if you use the bristle flat brush or the bristle filbert brush at this stage the advantage of the filbert brush is it's got that rounded edge so you can use finer marks with it but you can also use the broad end of the brush as well now at this point i started to paint some highlights on the apple so i still took that existing green mix that i used for the areas in light and then I added much more titanium white and a little cadmium yellow. And then I just tidied up some of these darker areas, for example, the occlusion shadow at the base of this apple. And just added a bit more texture into the cast shadow from the apple as well, just blending in some of the colours on the canvas here. Then I painted the stalk of the apple. That's actually quite essential to the composition because it marks where the core of the apple is going inward so it's actually going to help with the three-dimensional form and then i'm using even smaller brushes here mostly number zero synthetic pointed round brushes just so i can start marking in some of those shapes so the shadow areas of the apple stalk and then the areas in the highlights at this stage i've kept my painting tonally darker so that i've still got room to add lighter layers later on in the painting so i don't want to use all my lightest lights right at this stage in fact if you're painting anything especially if it's things like landscapes which i paint most of all you want to hold off on your lightest values whilst you're working through the painting and then save your lightest values until the very end and that often makes your whole painting just completely pop now here i was just painting as i said the base of the apple and just adding a few more of these occlusion shadows and just really contributing to the overall shape of it and then i let the painting dry for a couple of days now as i was using the liquid original it meant that the painting dried really quickly and i was able to come back to it quite soon and finish the painting one of the things is is because i was painting from life i didn't want my apple to spoil because i'd let a load of time elapse between painting sessions so i wanted to get back to this painting straight away as soon as possible and that's the thing when you're painting fruit you've probably got to work on it quite quickly because they can spoil quite quickly and it's a good idea to take a reference photo anyway just in case that happens now back to adding details here and what i did was i painted the shadow areas so just added another layer i wanted to cover the canvas properly as well because some of the white from the canvas was coming through so essentially using the same colors i was using during the blocking stage and as i said that was a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre and a bit of cadmium yellow i can even mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson as well if i need to take out the saturation of the color also adds a red element to it 
and then moving back onto the half tones within the side of the apple and again i still want to create that texture with those broad brush marks so i'm using a number three flat brush here i'm also varying up my paint mixture so my greens are centered around basically ultramarine blue yellow ochre and cadmium yellow that's forming the base of my greens I like to mix my own greens rather than using pre-mixed greens from the tube with the exception of phthalo green which I just use to boost the saturation of a green and just shift the colour if I need to but it's not essential that you use this colour. So also within the green mix if you remember I said I had a bit of cadmium red just to balance out the green, green being opposite to red on the colour wheel. And then titanium white that's going to lighten the value it will also desaturate the color so you might need to recharge it again with a bit more cadmium yellow and then an optional color is to mix in some phthalo green but it's interesting to when you observe your still life of your painting in this case when i was observing this apple that there's these subtle areas of reflected light as well and some warmer tones near the base of the apple so if you can see here, the green looks a bit warmer and that's where I've added a bit more yellow ochre into the mix as well. And what I was doing as well was I was just smoothing out some of these transition zones between the shadow areas, the half tones and the area of the apple that's in light. Now next I worked on the top of the apple where those brown markings are, which is really adding character to this apple and the whole painting. And still using the same colours that I used in the blocking stage, if you remember... That was a mix of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, and I've also used a little titanium white and even a small amount of cadmium yellow as well. So it's more of a sort of greenish brown. But I'm getting into more detail here. So now I'm using a synthetic number three filbert brush because that really forms a nice fine edge, almost like a blade of that brush. So good for painting these markings and then for some of these other markings I'm using a number zero synthetic pointed round so I'm getting into much finer detail here. Now if you want to learn more about painting techniques then you should most definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you want to delve even deeper then you've got to check out my Patreon channel where I've got three years worth of full length painting tutorial videos, a lot of landscape painting videos as that's one of my favourite subjects to paint but I now upload weekly content where we delve into all sorts of aspects of realism painting and if you want to learn more about painting still lifes I've just recently posted an hour long tutorial video to my Patreon channel where I painted an arrangement of fruit including a pineapple, an apple and a banana and I go into full detail including how to mix all the colours which I demonstrate on my palette. I also upload lesson notes, reference photos, time lapse videos, all sorts. It's all there to help you with your painting, whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced painter and just anyone that wants to get inspired by my painting style. It's just $5 a month. You can cancel any time. There's no commitment. So just give it a try just for a month and see how you go. I've put the link in the description box below. Anyway, back to the painting and now we're getting into more detail. So now I'm starting to paint these kind of flecks that are on the side of the apple, these kind of little spots, definitely adding more character to the apple itself. And I'm using a number zero pointed round brush and using the exact same color mix that I've used for these brown markings at the top of the apple. This is the really fun part of the painting because I've laid down all the main details, got that brush textures in from earlier on and now I'm just adding these last details and it becomes a lot easier as well. So just adding a few more highlights here to the area of the apple that's in light. Again, it's still the same color mix that I used before, that green mix just with more cadmium yellow and titanium white. And then for these highlights here, it's still the same colors but with even more titanium white in it and still a little bit of cadmium yellow and I'm applying the paint here with a number three synthetic filbert brush. Now one of the last things to do with this apple was just to tidy up the whole thing, maybe just add a few more brush marks just for the texture and the kind of painterliness of it. You want your painting to look alive, you don't want to go overboard with the detail either because that can really start to affect the composition and it might actually take away from it, it might make your painting look a little bit lifeless. So I try and keep my brush marks a little bit more on the loose side, a little bit more gestural and as I say it just makes the painting look alive. Now painting the areas in light here I just added some of these last spots 
It's a little bit lighter, the mix. It's the same colours that I've used for the markings at the top. There's just more titanium white and yellow ochre in the mix. And then the last thing I did was just to add another little layer to the occlusion shadow of the apple. But once that was done, that was pretty much it. The painting was finished. So I hope you enjoyed this painting video and that it inspires you to paint some still lifes. Be sure to check out the lesser notes that accompanies this video, which I've put the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching, happy painting, and I'll see you in the next video.